Ground reference maneuvers are designed to help the pilot learn to control the airplane while splitting their attention between the outside references and the instrument panel. For your private pilot check ride, you'll have to be able to demonstrate three ground reference maneuvers, a rectangular course, turns around a point, and S-turns. The first maneuver we are going to demonstrate is the rectangular course. The rectangular course is a ground reference maneuver designed to help the pilot fly a uniform traffic pattern by visual reference to the airport and the instruments. It also helps to develop a recognition of the effect that the wind has on an airplane and how to counteract it. To perform any of the ground reference maneuvers, one of the first things you need to know is what the wind direction is. The easiest way to determine the wind direction is by using the reported wind at the airport. There are also other indicators that a pilot can use. These include smoke, dust, blowing trees, flags, and even waves on the water. If these indicators are not available, the pilot can determine the wind direction by flying directly over a straight reference line, such as a road or a power line. Then start a constant bank, constant airspeed, 360 degree turn in either direction. The pilot will notate the exact starting point of the turn and once it is complete, see which direction the airplane has drifted. If there is no wind, the plane will end up in the same point as it started. For example, if the airplane was flying with a headwind and performed a constant bank, constant airspeed, 360 degree turn, upon completing the turn, the airplane would be short of its starting point. For the rectangular course, locate a ground track that resembles a rectangular shape with a definite border, and a length that is between a half mile to a mile long. Pick an altitude that is between 600 to 1000 feet AGL. Enter this maneuver on a 45 degree angle at midfield on the downwind leg and fly parallel at a distance of about a quarter to a half mile to the side of your rectangular course. You do not want to be too close or your turns may become too steep. The bank angle should not exceed 45 degrees. Once you have reached the crosswind section of your designated rectangle, you can begin to turn onto the crosswind leg. You will have a tailwind pushing the airplane at a faster than normal ground speed. The airplane will require a steeper amount of bank angle on this turn than any of the others. As you progress through the turn, your tailwind will become a crosswind. Therefore, your ground speed will decrease. In order to compensate, you will need to decrease the angle of bank. If the airplane was to maintain a heading parallel to the crosswind side, it would be blown off course. Therefore, the pilot must crab into the wind. When you have reached the upwind section of your designated rectangle, you can begin your turn. Since you are already crabbed into the wind, your turn will be less than 90 degrees. On this leg, there should be no need to crab the airplane as you will be flying directly into the wind. Once you have reached the crosswind section of your designated rectangle, you can start your turn. To counteract the wind, this turn should be the shallowest of all the turns and will be less than 90 degrees. As the crosswind component increases, you will want to decrease your angle of bank to compensate for the wind. Remember, on the crosswind side, make sure you crab into the wind so you don't get blown off course and remain parallel. When you have reached the downwind section of your rectangle, begin your turn. Since you are crabbing into the wind, your turn should be greater than 90 degrees. As the tailwind increases, you will want to increase your angle of bank to maintain an equal distance from the side of the rectangle. As the pilot will have to perform these maneuvers to the flight examiner, the practical test standards include Exhibits knowledge of the elements related to a rectangular course. Selects a suitable reference area. Plans the maneuver so as to enter a left or right pattern 600 to 1000 feet 
AGL, at an appropriate distance from the selected reference area, 45 degrees to the downwind leg. Applies adequate wind drift correction during straight and turning flight to maintain a constant ground track around the rectangular reference area. Divides attention between airplane control and ground track while maintaining coordinated flight. Maintains altitude plus or minus 100 feet. Maintains airspeed plus or minus 10 knots. The turnaround of point maneuver is designed to develop the ability of the pilot to control the airplane while dividing their attention between the flight path and the ground reference. The pilot will complete a full circle around a reference point while maintaining constant altitude, airspeed, and equal distance from the reference point. After verifying the wind direction, the first thing you want to do is select a reference point. This point should be something that is very distinguishable and easy to see while the airplane is banked. As with all ground reference maneuvers, select an altitude between 600 to 1000 feet AGL. Ensure that the airplane has adequate distance from the reference point to avoid any overbanking beyond 45 degrees. The maneuver will generally be performed to the left. To enter this maneuver, you want to fly the airplane on the downwind side of your reference point. Once your wings are abeam the reference point, you will start your turn to the left. Because you are flying on the downwind portion, your initial turn will require the steepest angle of bank. As your turn progresses, you will decrease your angle of bank as the tailwind and ground speed decrease. Continue to turn towards the upwind side. Your bank angle will be the shallowest at this point in the maneuver due to the headwind slowing down the airplane. As you continue your turn towards the starting point, you will gradually start to increase your angle of bank as your ground speed increases due to the tailwind. As the pilot will have to perform these maneuvers to the flight examiner, the practical test standards include Exhibits knowledge of the elements related to turns around a point Selects a suitable ground reference point Plans the maneuver so as to enter left or right at 600 to 1000 feet AGL at an appropriate distance from the reference point Applies adequate wind drift correction to track a constant radius turn around the selected reference point Divides attention between airplane control and the ground track while maintaining coordinated flight. Maintains altitude plus or minus 100 feet. Maintains airspeed plus or minus 10 knots. An S-turn is a maneuver designed to help the student learn to control the airplane and to correct for wind drift while turning. The student will perform a series of 180 degree semicircles in both directions while crossing a straight line reference, such as a road, power line, or fence line. After verifying the wind direction, select a reference line such as a road, power line, or fence line. The pilot will need to ensure that this reference line is long enough to allow several series of turns and that it is aligned perpendicular to the wind. For this maneuver, select an altitude that is between 600 to 1000 feet AGL. Start this maneuver flying with the downwind section. When the airplane crosses the reference line, the wing should be parallel to that line. After crossing the line, immediately start your turn. When the airplane is flying with the tailwind, the ground speed will be the highest and therefore will initially require the steepest angle of bank. As the turn progresses, begin to decrease the angle of bank to compensate for the wind that is now blowing crosswind. Continue to turn past the 90 degree point. Decrease the angle of bank as your ground speed decreases, while you turn into the headwind. At this point, your bank will be the shallowest. As the airplane is now starting to fly towards the reference line, 
Make the necessary adjustments so that upon completing the 180 degree turn, the wings will become level and parallel as you reach the reference line. As soon as the airplane crosses the reference line, the pilot should immediately begin the second 180 degree turn in the opposite direction. As you start the turn for your second 180 degrees, your bank angle will continue to be shallow to compensate for the wind drift as the wind will push you towards the reference line. As you continue to the 90 degree point, your bank should continually increase. Upon passing through this point, you will increase your bank to the steepest angle. At this point, you will want to make any necessary adjustments to ensure upon completion of the second 180 degree turn, the wings will be level and parallel as you reach the reference line. As a reminder, closely monitor your airspeed due to the fact that your speed will fluctuate with the wind. As the pilot will have to perform these maneuvers to the flight examiner, the practical test standards include exhibits knowledge of the elements related to S-turns, selects a suitable ground reference line, plans the maneuver so as to enter at 600 to 1000 feet AGL perpendicular to the selected reference line, applies adequate wind drift correction to attract, applies adequate wind drift correction to track a constant radius turn on each side of the selected reference line, reverses the direction of the turn directly over the selected reference line, Divides attention between airplane control and the ground track while maintaining coordinated flight. Maintains altitude plus or minus 100 feet. Maintains airspeed plus or minus 10 knots.